Mock drafts are starting to fly around like it's no tomorrow. We've talked about a couple. Daniel Jeremiah had us linked to the defensive tackle, Byron Murphy, out of Texas. Then we looked at Mel Kuyper's mock draft where he had, a, I think it was a corner or something like that falling to the Vikings. I really can't remember off the top of my head at this point. But we've talked about mock drafts a couple times, and that's because our team, well, isn't in the playoffs. Super Bowl is just two weeks away, and we're looking forward to what the Vikings might look like like in the future, that being the quarterback position. What's going to happen there with Kirk Cousins asking for two years, $90 million, fully guaranteed. He can basically kick rocks, okay? Because I, I don't think the Vikings should pay that. Maybe there's another team out there that should, you know, think about paying that. We've talked about it a couple of times where $60 million for two years, 34 and a half guaranteed. I think that'd be a perfect contract for Kirk Cousins. But with, you know, his recent history of negotiating, he basically gets fully guaranteed contract. He is the one that changed the game on contract. So we're looking forward to what the Vikings might do, and we're kind of looking at that quarterback position, uh, position thinking the Vikings need to draft somebody here or go on free agency and sign somebody for at least a couple more years and you know look forward to the future. I say we need to draft a guy because this draft class has three top-tier quarterbacks in Caleb Williams, Drake May, and Jaden Daniels. Then you have two subpar or at least – Pretty decent, could be good, could be bust, J.J. McCarthy and Michael Penix. Now, all these guys could be bust or, or superstars. You, you have no idea what, what you're going to expect from these people going into the NFL. But the Vikings have been linked to multiple uh, reports saying that they're aggressively looking to trade up where we, where we did that last year, trying to get Anthony Richardson. Thank goodness that didn't happen. Hurt four out of the five games. You get it. We already know the whole story. But now, Wilhelm of Pro Football Network, wrote an article and did his mock draft, basically talking about every single selection and what happened at that selection, where he had the Vikings trading up. What what pick did we get? Well, we got the number two pick, trading with the Washington Commanders. Uh, I do believe he said basically that, uh, let's see, look at the compensation. The projected trade said the Vikings received the number two overall pick. In return, the Commanders would get the 11th overall, the 42nd overall, and the 155th overall pick, plus our or Minnesota's 2025 first round and third round pick. So it's a big package, but to move all the way up the two, you got to assume it's going to be a pretty big package to select the guy you want. And that guy just happens to be Jaden Daniels because uh, he, in this mock draft, basically said, look, Bears are keeping Justin Fields, and we're going to go through this. Even though they're keeping fields, they're going to select Caleb Williams at number one. Then he goes to that Vikings pick at number two, trading with the Washington Commanders, who, well, let's get right into it. Before we do that, make sure to subscribe to the channel. So he said, basically, with Williams off the board, we'll throw another change into the order of the top three quarterbacks. Rather than having the Commanders take Drake May to replace a fellow Tar Heel Sam Howell, We'll have them trade down and ride with the incumbent starter for at least one more year, depending on how the board falls later, which I think does make sense. They, they've said time and time again that they believe in Sam Howell and that he's the guy going forward, so why not give him a chance, especially on his rookie contract, and kind of test the waters this season, especially with the new coach, new offensive coordinator, new defensive coordinator. How does this guy uh, mold, or how does Sam Howell become uh, does it become better, basically, is what they're looking at. Now, again, mock drafts are a game of information. Sources expect the Vikings to be aggressive in the draft in their search for a franchise quarterback on a rookie deal. And if you look at what happened or has happened around the league with these rookie deals, some pretty good things. Brock Purdy, rookie deal, Mr. Irrelevant, been to or is already in a Super Bowl in his second year in the National Football League. Uh, and the Niners are basically able to use all that money because only paying Brock Purdy 800000 to build the roster around him. C.J. Stroud in Houston set up really nice. He's on a rookie deal, a little bit more of an expensive deal than what Brock Purdy's getting, but Houston's now able to allocate those funds to the defense, to the offensive weapons, and, and build this team around him. And those teams, more, more than likely, have success down the uh, down in the future. So that's what the Vikings are looking to do, find their franchise quarterback because, I mean, let's be real, other than Kirk Cousins and, and Dante Culpepper and Fran Tarkenton, we really haven't had a stellar franchise quarterback. We thought Christian Ponder could, well, I don't know if anybody thought that at the time of the draft selection could have J.J. Watt. What are we doing? Made no sense. But we really have been kind of in this purgatory of where we don't have great quarterbacks. So Jaden Daniels, though, can make literally every throw and has ath uh, elite athleticism. If the Vikings put a guy with his upside in an offense with Jordan Addison and Justin Jefferson, they'll have the chance to contend for a Super Bowl if the LSU quarterback 
reaches his potential. So what is exactly his potential? Well, if you don't know, he did win the Heisman Trophy this past season in college football after being basically counted out his entire college career. You're not good enough. You're never going to make it in this league. You won't be in the NFL, blah, blah, blah. You're going to be a bust. Well, he just kept stacking those chips and started you know, proving the naysayers uh, wrong, per se. Let's look at his stats. What he did at LSU last season, just to give you a little glimpse of what we could see in the NFL. Now, granted, this is college stats, a lot different ball game, a lot slower pace, so it's going to be a, a lot different come the NFL. But if you look at what he's what he did passing wise, three thousand eight hundred twelve yards passing, forty touchdowns, only four interceptions, had a ninety five point six QBR, which is really really good. Only four interceptions in a season. I mean, that's up there with like the Joe Burrow and, and uh, the uh, Tim Tebow and all those types of stats. He also had over 1,000 yards rushing with 10 rushing touchdowns. Jaden Daniels is what the Vikings have been looking for, a quarterback that can scramble and utilize his uh, speed to his advantage, roll outside the pocket, and get things moving. Because when the Vikings have had a mobile quarterback in the past, you know, Fran Tarkenton, you could count Randall McDaniel or Randall uh, Cunningham, uh, sort of Dante Culpepper at the beginning of his career before he got a little bigger and started to slow down, become that po- pocket passer with Randy Moss and stuff like that. We've had success. We've won a lot of ball games when we've had that type of quarterback compared to when we've had a pocket passer. And Jane Daniels fits that mold perfectly. I think the Vikings need to try to at least trade up to get Jaden Daniels if that means getting the eighth pick from the Falcons and trying to sneak him away. Or if the commanders do take Jaden Daniels, try to get Drake May, get one of these guys that are supposed to be a superstar quarterback because I'm not paying Kirk Cousins $90 million for two years fully guaranteed off of an Achilles injury and being at the age he is. It's just, I'm sorry, that's not the direction this team wants to go. That's not the direction the state wants the team to go. The Minnesota Vikings have been mediocre. All Minnesota sports teams have been mediocre for way too long. It's time to change that with being aggressive. That's what Kwesi Dofamensa has to do. Be aggressive, trade up, find a way, figure it out. Get the next quarterback and let's mold him under the uh, Kevin O'Connell and, and have him learn the scheme and stuff like that, and then pick up a veteran backup, you know, in in free agency or whatever you want to do. Okay, that's the route you need to go. That's the route I think the Vikings should do uh, should go. The Vikings are going to be aggressive. Hopefully, okay, we've seen in the past that they might be aggressive and they trade out of it. So we'll see what happens come draft night. There's going to be a lot of this talk of who the Vikings might take in that first round. But right now, as I sit here, gotta take a quarterback, and I think a lot of you guys. Uh, would echo that sentiment. So you guys let me know your thoughts on drafting Jaden Daniels after trading up to that number two pick. Also drop a like and subscribe to the channel. It'd be much, much appreciated. Have a great rest of the night, folks, and Skull Vikes.